Hello everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at some of the stocks that were in play today. Okay, so first up we're going to take a look at Apple, ticker symbol, or, uh, ticker symbol AAPL. Alright, so this is Apple here. I want, I want to take a look at this first just real quick. Um, as you can see, it's been on this pullback. It had the, uh, a gap down open yesterday, and uh, today that gap did fill. There's a gap between low of day on this candle and high of day on this candle. And as you can see, the upper wick filled the gap. And so it's going to have to happen. It has to break the top of the gap and EMA4 at 187.44. Once it gets above that level, that'll be a signal that the the bounce play is sustained. Today, it's trying to start the bounce, but 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 it has to get above EMA four to, to signal that it wants to head higher. Okay, so if if it does uh, uh, pull back, what, what what happened was is it came down here and it bounced off of the the lower Bollinger Band, currently at one eighty five, and so this was a technical bounce off of the bottom of the channel. It went from up here the the upper Bollinger Band straight down to the bottom of the Bollinger Band, had a technical bounce, but if it fails to get above EMA four that'll signal that the downtrend could uh, continue okay so so uh, if you look here at the apple uh, uh, uh what is this one okay this is another daily chart and um as you can see here, it's in this channel um, from back here in May. There, there was this sideways channel, and so it's at the bottom of the channel. It's trying to uh, uh, bounce off of support here, and so it will signal downside risk if it drops below. A drop below 185 would put the 50-day simple moving average at 182 on deck. So that is the downside risk. With the close below the middle Bollinger Band last week, the dotted purple line, that, that signaled the start of a new downtrend. A new uptrend will not begin until the middle Bollinger Band at 189.83 turns back into support. Okay, so let's look at the Apple 15-minute um, chart here. And as you can see, it's trying to heat up on the bounce. It got above the middle Bollinger Band yesterday, and that signaled it was heating up. That's the dotted purple line. And then today, it was working on the green line here. That's the 50 simple moving average. It got above that level at 12.15, and then that level held into the close. It closed right on what we call the 50-yard line here, that middle Bollinger Band, the middle of the playing field, the middle of the, 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 the channel. And so it needs to stay above that level and the 50 simple moving average down here at 185.89 to continue bouncing. If it were to drop below these levels, that's going to signal downside risk. You could see it come down here and retest that uh, that that low, uh, you know, down here around 184, 183.75. And, and so, so to the upside, what it needs to do is bust through this 100 simple moving average at 187.29. If it can break through that level in the high close here, at, uh, th th that was at uh, um, 145 today, um, th then that should be the signal that it wants to head higher and that this is a sustained bounce. So it needs to get above this white candle, above 187. As you can see here, um, you know that's lined up with EMA4. So it's all about breaking that 187 resistance zone and turning it into support. Okay, take a look at SNAP. Okay, ticker symbol SNAP. This is a chart that we we're working on, um, um, you know, it's closed down another uh, almost four percent today. And so, yeah, so we, we th th this chart was uh, fr from back here when, when it was uh, breaking, uh, you know, the, this tr trying to break the bottom of the gap level. And you could see it had this nice sustained run. And, and then yesterday uh, w was the red flag and, and, you know, alerts were put out, um, you know, in the chat that, that, that uh, it is forming a doji after the, 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 the multi-day run. And, and, and uh, yeah, and so, so it, it had already had the, the, uh, the, the, the three gap ups. And so, so the, the, the chart was already frothy, and, and, and so the, the doji was signaling that, that, that it could possibly be topping out, and then today it had that big gap down open. What happened is it hit that 200, 100 and 200 day simple moving averages here, and it failed to break that level, and that was going to be the, the tough level to break. It was going to need to bust through that in order to head higher. It, it filled the gap. It came down here and filled the gap between low of day and this candle and high of day and this candle, and now it's back below the, that top of gap resistance level. It needed to stay above that 1375 level. It dropped below EMAs 4 and 8 and 13. And what's going on now, it's hitting the green line. That's the 50-day simple moving average at 1266. 
And just below is the middle Bollinger Band at 1245. If these levels hold, this is where it should have a technical bounce. Okay, so so uh, Snap should bounce here. This is where where I mean, if this uptrend is going to continue and Snap's going to remain bullish, this is the level that it should bounce. If it were to drop below and you see it trading below 1245, that's going to be major downside risk. And then it could come back down here and retest the bottom of the gap. You know, it, it just the chart would be broken. And so this is the level that stocks bounce from that are bullish. This is the bottom of the channel. The bottom of the channel is the, the 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 middle Bollinger Band and the top of the channel is the upper Bollinger Band for stocks that are in an uptrend on the daily chart. Once they drop below that, that middle Bollinger Band turns into the top of the channel and then the bottom of the channel is the lower Bollinger Band which is actually off this off this chart currently. Okay, so if you look at the, the Snap weekly chart here, you can see it, it, it hit the uh, uh, middle Bollinger Band and 50-week moving average resistance levels here, that, that 1450 to 1475 resistance zone. It, it needed a break above that. Notice how that was lined up with the same resistance zone uh, on the daily chart with the 100 and 200 day simple moving averages. So when you see uh, uh, moving averages, you know, lined up on multiple time frames that, that are that, that are uh, major resistance, that, 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 that that's uh, uh, going to be a tough level to break. Fail to break, that's your signal to lock and gains after a, a, a multi-week run. And, and so, you know, that's kind of what happened here when it bounced and it hit the green line and failed to get above. And so right now it's trying to hold EMAs 4 and 8. They're currently in the 1280 support zone. And so if they could, if it can stay above 1280 and then get back above EMA 13 here, or at, at 1319, the orange line, th then it could make a, a run back up to that middle Bollinger Band. Once it gets above that 1475 level, the middle Bollinger Band, and closes above it for the week, that's going to be your signal, okay, it could possibly start a new uptrend. You could see Snap has a history of not being able to stay above the middle Bollinger Band. It gets above and drops back below. You know, it got above. Each time it's it, it, it's a week or two uh, of white candles above, and then, and then the, the, it sells off. And, and so, uh, you know, we'll see here if it can get, um, you know, a new uh, pattern going. Um, yeah, it just, you could see the bottom here. Um, th this one was showing that it was testing the all-time lows here. And so what happened is it, it dropped down to new lows. And so it came down here and made the new low below the August uh, lows. It, 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 and then it got back above that level. So, you know, obviously it needs to stay back above 12. If it were to drop below, that would signal uh, major downside risk. It, it, and uh, yeah, so it has uh, basically this this channel going on now where it has a, 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 a sideways channel that it's been in since, uh, you know, the, the, the last uh, multiple months here, you know, and so it needs to bust out of the top of the channels. But first things first, it just has to get above that middle Bollinger Band and 50-week moving average. And so the key is is to, to check out the 15-minute the chart and or, or the intraday chart. Pick your poison. This is the one I like. And, and so uh, it's got really tight Bollinger Bands here. And, and, and so uh, when the Bollinger Bands get very tight like this, you can see this is the upper Bollinger Band and then the lower Bollinger Band's down here, the, the two purple lines. And then notice how they came together. I mean, the, the, the lower Bollinger Band was off the chart. And so when they get really tight like that, that's a signal that a move is imminent. And so it could either break below the lower Bollinger Band at 1276, and that's going to signal downside risk. Uh, um, you can see down here, you've got the uh, the, the support at 1270. A drop below 1270 would, would signal major downside risk. And then to the upside is a break above the upper Bollinger Band and the 50 simple moving average currently and the 1290 uh, support or resistance level. And if it could bust through that, that's going to be the signal that, 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 that it could possibly heat up. The, the chart would be bullish on the 15-minute chart and that, that it wants to push higher again. And then we'd be looking for a retest of these moving averages. So keep an eye on Snap for a break above 1293. That should be the signal that it wants to push higher. Okay, take a look at Naked Brand here. This is ticker symbol NAKD. This is the huge winner. Closed up 434%. That was uh, an incredible move. Uh, you know, it, it would have been best if you loaded uh, last week, like all the people here on the 12th. When, when it when it heated up and then it formed the black candle, it pulled back and it got back in this uh, sideways channel. And you could see they had it in this uh, uh, holding type pattern here. Look how it was just winding tight. And, and so th th this big candle on the 12th of June is what we call the load. Um, this, this is what you call the attention spike, volume spike. Th 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 this is the clue that, that that the stock was heating up. You know, it stayed in the range, but, but this was giving you an idea. You know, and even people back here on May 29th, you know, 
know, this is like, like the front load. It's like, you know, th th this was the, all the build up for the big move that happened today. You can see there was big volume today, a giant gap up open higher. And, and then now the share price is, is, is you know, basically it, it's, it's uh, the candles floating up here above the, the upper Bollinger Band, which is down here at 490. And then just below that is EMA4 at 431. And so when you get the, the big uh, gap on the chart, there's a space between low and Dave on this candle and high of day on, uh, on yesterday's candle. The, the 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 risk is the candles work back into the uh, Bollinger Bands, and so if that happened, the the first support level is going to be EMA four at four thirty one. So that would be the downside risk. Now to the upside, it needs to keep pushing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, back above the the, w w the the closing price today. So so eight fifty would be your benchmark. If it could stay above eight fifty tomorrow, that'd be a signal that it wants to push higher. If you see it drop below that level, that's going to signal downside risk, and and it could possibly consolidate. It, 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 this this is the weekly chart for NAKD. Each candle on this chart represents uh, one, one week of trading. As you can see, it goes back here to 2013. And, and, and so what happened is it came up here and it hit the 300-week moving average at 1042. You can see that that's lined up with uh, you know re resistance levels from from back here in uh, uh, 2014. And so it, it, it hit this zone that that was lined up with the the 300-week moving average, and, and it pulled back. And so that's going to be the big level to break. It's going to have to close above this 1042 resistance level for the week, the signal that it wants to head higher. Failed to do that, and and then, and then the candles could could you know could take a breather, and the candles could pull back in the bands. This is a huge candle this this week. It's a giant flagpole, and, and so you know it's going to be all about closing above that blue line. If it does, th then this high close from back here, and it looks like August of of 2014 it, it is going to be the big level to break. It looks like at 13 dollars. Okay, so so yeah, so this is a huge move for NAKD. It just has to get above that 1040 resistance level to head higher. Now, now, if you look here at the 15-minute chart for NAKD, you can see the load that we were talking about. This was the attention spike back here on the 12th, the, the giant volume, volume spike, and then they pulled it back, and then it just went sideways. Look how tight the Bollinger Bands got. I mean, this was wound so tight on the 19th. It was telling you that a, that a move was coming. <clears throat> it was either going to break down or break out, and you can see here on the 19th before it broke out today, the, the candles were heating up. The, the, it, was, it was above all the moving averages right in EMA4, support higher. So that was your clue, and, and 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 then today, boom, big big gap up open, and so today for the people that jumped in, you know, it was harder to make money. There were still gains to be had if you got in on that first candle, um, you know, down here at six twenty five at the open, and then and then you have the the, the high close up here at, at uh, uh, you know uh, around ten seventy five or so. The, the candle here at 12 o'clock and, and so it, what's going to have to happen it's going to have to break above the, the high close resistance level and, and if it can get above this candle that's going to be your signal that wants to head higher in, in, into the close today it dropped below the the uh, um, middle Bollinger Band at 944 and so that 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 is a red flag it needs to get back above that level that's the dotted purple line here um, it, it traded in a channel pretty much today um, you know after the big move at the open, you know, it went pretty much sideways. It, it traded, it closed at the lower end uh, of today's range, uh, of the range after the open. And, and so it's going to be all about holding this 850 level. You know, if, if it drops below 850, you have the lower Bollinger Band at 785. And then you could have a drop down here to this to this zone down here, which was the open at, at around 625. And then it's the 50 simple moving average at 550. That's the big downside risk is that it came down there to test that 50 simple moving average before heading higher. So to the upside, 944, uh, uh, 1075, to the downside, 850 and 785, drop below would possibly put the 550s on deck. Okay, so check out CLPS. This this closed up 56%. Um, huge move. Uh, th th this, is, this is on a blue sky breakout. Th th this stock just started trading in May here. You know, it went sideways and then, and then uh, you know, it, it really heated up last week on, on that big uh, gap up. You know, it had, had the, the you know it heated up the day before and then it's been pushing higher and so this is hitting new all-time highs um, it's on what we call a blue sky breakout the only resistance above you know for historical resistance would be that upper wick on today's candle and, and so what you have to do on a blue sky breakout is check out the intraday chart
charts and here's the 15 minute chart you can see it's in a strong channel here's ascending resistance it did break above ascending resistance today so it's pushing through the top of the channel you know it's getting frothy here you've got uh, RSI up here at 93 so that's extreme frothiness you know extreme overbought and then you have Fasto at 95 so this is all time high levels you know uh, for for both indicators signaling that this is uh, you know extremely uh, at, uh, extreme overbought levels and then you can look down here at MACD how it's just pushing straight up here you know the, the, it'll be hard to sustain this type of trajectory for for an extended period of time but right now it's party time and, and, and it's pushing higher but but there, there there's a couple of red flags you've got today's candle you know it's pushing well above uh, yesterday's candle with a small gap here between high of day yesterday and low of day today and, and the, if, if the share price pulled back and tested that EMA4 down there at 1234, that would fill the gap. There is another gap that's way down here. Um, so there's two gaps on the chart, and then and then if you look here at the 15 minute chart, you could see that the the, the middle Bollinger Band has been holding the dotted purple line here. If that continues to hold at 1375, the uptrend's intact. If you were to hold on a drop below the middle Bollinger Band. Then it's all about holding the 50 simple moving average at 1243. You can see that held uh, on, on prior, you know, test when it came down into that zone. When it got below the middle Bollinger Band, the 50 zone held each time. And so the, those are your two levels. You know, that's the bottom of this channel here. As long as that, you know, if, if there's a pullback, the risk is it comes down here to 1243. It could bounce off that level and keep that channel going. Now, if it were to drop below the bottom of the channel, or below the 50 simple moving average, then it could come down to the the 100 simple moving average average at 1080 but right now it's it's on blue sky breakout it has to keep making new highs you can see it closed near a uh, high of day today and so it's got to break that 1750 resistance zone to head higher okay so let's check out GEVO G-E-V-O okay so uh, you know I was talking about candles floating above the upper Bollinger Band and this is a perfect example right here it did close down 35 percent today and so uh, yeah the candles worked back into the bands that's what happens um, you know it had the big gap open today um, it, 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 or yesterday, and, and it formed the, the 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 small real candle body with the long upper and lower wicks, and, and so this this spinning top type candle. I don't know if that lower wick's long enough to be a classic uh, spinning top, but it's the same type of indecision candle. And, and what it means is that even though you know the share price ran up to 25 and ran down to 16, it, it, it closed the day pretty much where it opened. And when that happens during an uptrend, especially you know when it happens above the upper Bollinger Band, which is down here at 13. 1997. That's a red flag. That's a signal that that the sellers and buyers are both, you know, that, that the, the the buyers are tired. You know, the, the sellers are starting. You know, they pull back from high of day, and that the candles could possibly work back into the bands. That's what happens. The candles like to work back into the bands. And today's red candle is, is that classic example of how, how how the candles do like to do that. And, and so uh, it came down here and it bounced off of the the the, the 300 day simple moving average at 1181. And off of that EMA4 level <clears throat> at 12.33, th those are the two key levels to hold. Now, in after hours trading, it's down here, I think it was around 11.60. So it's currently below that 300-day simple moving average. If that level were to turn into resistance, that would be a red flag signaling downside risk. It, it, it needs to hold the 200-day simple moving average at 10.35. That's a really big level. That was the top back here in March. And so if it was to drop below that level, that would be a major red flag. It would be back in, into this uh, previous trading zone, um, you know, could drop down to the 100 simple moving average. It, it, it really, you know, the best thing is, is that tomorrow for the bulls is it gets back above that 300 day simple moving average. If that doesn't happen and it comes down, it hits that 200 day simple moving average, you want to see a bounce off of that level. It would signal downside risk if it were to drop below. Today, bearish one black crow reversal pattern did form. So this is a, a, a strong reversal pattern. And so uh, now we'll be looking for a bearish reversal reversal confirmation. Um, if you look here at the 15 minute chart for GIVO, this is the one from uh, yesterday. And so, yeah, you notice how it, may, it failed to make the, the uh, higher high yesterday. So, so uh, you know, it made a, a high on the 18th and then on the 19th, it, may, it broke out It made the higher high. Then it ran up. It topped out around 24 and then it failed to make that higher high. And so the break below EMA is four and eight where you're out. And then, and then if you didn't get out there or, or you know, first was your high of day. If you didn't time that, 
then if you didn't, you know, th then your next out was the break below EMAs four and eight. If you didn't get out there, then the break below the middle Bollinger Band was an out. And then if you didn't get out there, th th then the break below the 50 simple moving average is the next out. You know, that's how, that's how we like to play it. And, and, and so it, it, it dropped below all those levels. And so now it closed with the tight Bollinger Bands holding the 100 simple moving average <coughs> at 1269. And so that level needs to hold. If that level were to break, then then you could see a drop down here to the 200 simple moving average at 835. Now to the upside, it needs to bust through 13. That, that's the middle Bollinger Band there at 1304. If it can get back above 13, then that, that could signal that, okay, yeah, now, now GIVO's bouncing, it's reversing, and then you could see it run back up to that 50 simple moving average at 1757. The tight Bollinger Bands here, you've got the upper Bollinger Band up here and the lower Bollinger Band down here. This is a signal that a move is imminent, that there should be a move tomorrow. Now, now, now at, at the... Uh, uh, you know, after hours trading, the share price is down here below the lower Bollinger Band, so it is signaling downside risk. Now it could get a rally going um, uh, pre-market. You never know. But but if it it does drop below that 12 uh, lower Bollinger Band level, that that is going to be a major red flag. And then you're talking about a drop down to the 200 simple moving average at 8:35. Okay, let's take take a look at Ford here. This is another big uh, winner. Closed up 54% today. Um, if you look here. It did form the, the upper wick on today's candle. Um, it, it, it came, what happened was is it came down here and uh, um, hit this prior resistance zone from back here in January. You can see the trading here in January. It, 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 and so it, it came up and it got close to that high close. The, 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 this 290 to $3 level, the, the, the closing price here to get exact it, 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 on the, uh, what is that, uh, 20, uh 25th uh, of January is the key level to break, and that's at about 295. And so it didn't quite get to that level, but it hit this resistance zone and it pulled back. And so now the two big levels, in my opinion, is this 250 level. You know, you can see a lot of candles hit this zone. If it can get above 250, then it's going to be this 295 level. If it can get above both those levels, that's going to be a signal that it wants to head higher. It could run back up into the fours. You got this upper wick way up here from January. Now, now if it fails to get through the 250 to 290 resistance zone, um, you know, and it pulls back, what, what, what could happen is, is it, it could uh, drop back down here to EMA4 at 175. You want to see that level hold. <clears throat> it had this very strong ch sideways channel here. You can see March, April, May, and June. It has a, a really strong sideways channel. And, and, and then today it busted out of the top of the channel. So you always want to see the channel, the top of it, turn into support. Okay, so let's look at AETI. Um, th this closed up 27% today. Um, yeah, it had the long upper wick on today's candle. Um, you could see here the upper wick where it pulled back from this 170 resistance zone. The, the closing price on the 5th of June is, is the key level to break. It needs to get a Above that 170 resistance zone to head higher. It's holding the, the, the blue line here, which is the 300 simple moving average at 145. It needs to stay above that level, hold that, and then get above 170, and that'll be a signal that it wants to break out higher. It came down here after multiple red candles in a row, and it held the, the, the 100 day simple moving average at 107 and the middle Bollinger, Bollinger Band at 115 now, <coughs> support zone, and, and, and it got a nice bounce. Uh, but but this, this is an indecision candle here. You've got this. Um, um, you know, spinning top with the black candle, it closed below the open, even though it was up on the day. And if you look down here at accumulation distribution, um, there was a spike down, and you have the spike down and shaking money flow. So there was a big volume spike, you know, but, and, and the share price closed up 27% today, but you have a spike down in these indicators. And, and that was caused by this long upper wick on today's candle, signaling possible dilution. You know, for most of these uh, small cap penny stocks, um, you know, they, they, they sell shares to pay the bills. And so that, that looks like what happened today. The, the big thing that needs to happen now is it just needs to hold this this 144 support level, get above 170. That'll soon it wants to head higher. Um, you know, it has to stay above the middle Bollinger Band and, and that 100-day simple moving average to keep this uptrend going. If you look at the weekly chart, this is an older chart. Um, it, 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 from uh, I think I made this uh, three weeks ago on, on this first candle, the first white candle there. And, and so it had come up and it broke above the, the 50 and 100-week moving averages and, and pulled back. And so it's been working on turning this 100-week moving average at 139, the green line into support. And so that's a key level to close above uh, this week. It would also be 
uh, really bullish if it can close above the gold line. That's the next big level to break at 168. It, a weekly close above 168 would be extremely bullish, and it could, you know, that could possibly lead to a run up to that 200 weekly mean average at 286. Notice the big volume here. So it has big volume, and, and the chart is heating up. It's turning that middle Bollinger Band at 105 into support, and so it's you know been starting a new uptrend on, on the weekly chart. It has to hold that level. If it dropped below, that would be a red flag. It's in this uh, falling wedge. Uh, uh, this this uh, it had this uh, channel. Right, and so so it, the, the, this descending channel, and it, and it broke down below the channel here in March, and now it's back in the channel, and and so the hundred week moving average is lined up at the top of the channel. It's going to need to bust through to head higher. Okay, so take a look at L I F E here. Closed up nearly twenty two percent today. This chart's heating up. Notice how R S I just broke above fifty. Fasto just broke above eighty. You've got the bull cross on uh, plus D I here with the green line crossing the red line. So these are all signals that the chart is heating up. It, it, it closed above the middle Bollinger Band back here and that that level has been holding at 95. As long as it holds, it signals that this uptrend is intact. Right now, it's hitting uh, some resistance from this close here. And so if it can bust through, then, then you've got, uh, let's see here. So, so we can bust through this level. You've got the uh, same kind of situation here in the 150s and then uh, the 50-day simple moving average. You know, if it can get through this zone, You've got this zone and, and the 50 day simple moving average. So, so it, it looks like, um, yeah, if, if it can bust through 150, look for a possible run up to 165. It is on a five day run um, and it is hitting resistance here. So, you got to, uh, you know, be on the lookout for, for a pause. Um, it, as long as EMA4 at 112 is holding, you know, the chart is super strong and the signal is to ride. Okay, let's look at DAC here. This is a marine transportation stock. All right, so uh, it, it's heating up. It, it had a little volume spike for this thinly traded stock. Um, it, it, it's it's uh, closed today above the 200 and 300 day simple moving averages. So so the close above uh, that 147 level, the, the red line's the 200 day simple moving average and the blue line is the uh, 300 day simple moving average. And, and you can see it also closed above high close horizontal resistance. Uh, that, that was the close here, the, the high close here in May. And, and so the close above this level and, and the blue line and also the red line here, th that, that's very bullish, okay? It, it, I mean, it actually, you know, started the day down here, uh, b b you know, yesterday it closed below the gold line, the 100 day simple moving average at 126. It was holding the green line, the 50 day simple moving average at 124. You can see it had, you know, it turned the middle Bollinger Band into support and they'd been staircasing it higher and it hit that, that, that blue line. You know, it worked from down here, the lower Bollinger Band, all the way up to the 300 day simple moving average where it stalled out and it pulled back. It held the bullish level, the 50 day simple moving average, and now it's back above the 300. So if it can stay above that 147 level, that would be really bullish and it would signal that, that it should want to keep pushing higher you know you've got the uh close here at 160 is the big level and then uh right here at uh one uh what is that 175 the next two big levels okay so let's look at nvcn here closed up 20 percent yeah yeah ch check it out it, it closed above that middle bollinger band so the last couple times that it did that it did it did it in may twice and each time it failed to stay above the dotted purple line, which is the 20-day simple moving average currently at 0.035. If it can hold that level, um, th then a new uptrend could begin. You can see the Bollinger Bands are tight here. Um, you know, this is the lower Bollinger Band. This is the upper Bollinger Band. It's lined up at the 50-day simple moving average here at $0.04. Cents. If, if you see a break above $0.04, cents, that should be the signal that NBCN wants to head higher. If it drops below 0.035, it'll signal more consolidation is coming, not ready to go, to hold all that kind of stuff um, you know it has to uh, break above that level to head higher you know you could see it was in this uh, really tight uh, trading range got above um, you know we'll see if it can get an uptrend going so keep an eye on that one um, keep an eye on BDR here very low volume but, but the chart is heating up at our size back above 50 it's at 52 uh, it, it's it was very oversold it was below 20 on on fast dough and it still is it's at 15 right now so there's a lot of juice in the tank for this thing to push higher um, it, it, it came down and it's bouncing off of the 50-day simple moving average support zone it closed back above that level today at 109 
So that, that, that's like your stop loss level. You want to see it stay above that level. It'll be a risk to hold if it closes below. As long as that level holds and then it breaks above the middle Bollinger Band at 118, that, that could signal that it wants to push higher. It could, could, you could see it has a history of making good runs. You know, it had the really nice run back here between February and then when it topped out in April and then it pulled back. It bounced off the 50-day simple moving average and then notice it had a really nice run in May. You know, it actually ran all the way up to 220, so it had a really good run. And then it came back down, and now it's at the 50-day simple moving average again. And so this could be the start of the next push. It's all about turning that 118 level into support. Okay, so check out yoga. All right, yoga works. Um, yeah, so so cool ticker symbol here. Closed up 25%, low volume stock. RSI at 59, so it's heating up. Fasto at 80 bullish crossover on plus DI. So you've got everything that you're looking for for a chart heating up. It closed today above the middle Bollinger Band at, at, at $2. And then it also closed above the 50-day simple moving average at $2.14. If both those levels hold, that would be really bullish and it could get a, a, a nice uptrend going. It needs to break the two or the 100-day simple moving average at $2.43. That's the next big level to break. It did close above the upper Bollinger Band, so it could pull back. It has to stay above the 50-day simple moving average at $2.14. You know, that, that, that's like the stop loss level. If, it, if drop below that signal consolidation it could come down test the middle bollinger man it just wouldn't be a good play it's only a good play if it can stay above that level and then if it could break above that 100 day simple moving average it could possibly run back up to that uh, 200 um, you, you can see here that there was a lot of uh, resistance here that, that's lining up you can see where the high of day hit hit the, all this resistance it's going to be a tough level to break if it does break above that would be extremely bullish so keep an eye on it it's a thinly traded stock you know this is one this is the one of the better you know, uh, days that it has for volume. You know, it, it, it's not not many people's cup of tea, but I know people that watch this video like the penny stocks. So, uh, yeah, check it out. And then uh, talking about penny stocks, I'll leave you with this last play here. This is BSRC. This is an over-the-counter stock. It did close up 182% today. So congrats to everybody in the chat that was on this. I know a lot of people ha had been in this play, and um, that was cool to see it follow through big time today. You know, it made that nice move yesterday where it broke out above resistance, and so it got above these uh, key levels here. And, and that signal that it wanted to break out higher, <clears throat> it was above all the moving averages yesterday, and, and it finally got above this zone. You know, high close horizontal resistance from the 11th above that 300 day simple moving average at 36. All clues that it wants to bust out higher. It has a very strong uptrend going. And then today was the big payday. It just really pushed hard. I don't, I, I, you know, you never know when, when that's going to happen. That was cool that it happened today on big volume. Um, it, 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 the, the, the thing is now, okay, so it pushed well above that upper Bollinger Band, so we got to look out for, for it working back into the bands, because it could come down here to EMA4 at 09 and bounce off that level, and the chart could still be super strong. It's just when they get above that upper Bollinger Band, you know, and they push like that, you know, many times it's a signal that's getting ahead of itself, but that doesn't mean they can't keep pushing it higher, so we'll have to see what happens tomorrow. If it does, you know, that that is the downside risk, that it comes down to test that 9 level. Now, now if you look at the BSRC weekly chart you could see the the level that it needs to break you know it had a huge move i mean look at that volume spike i mean this is the most volume for the stock in in years you know it might be the biggest volume week ever i didn't go that far back um but but what happened was is, is a couple weeks ago here it closed above the middle Bollinger Band and the green line, the 50-week moving average for the first time since back here in in uh, 2016. You know, for the entire year of 2017 and so far in 2018, it had never closed above the 50-week moving average. That close above was your clue. That's why it, it, it that, you know we look for that. To, you know, that's a big signal when, when they when they the algorithms let it close above that level because that's your big clue that the, that it's heating up on a longer time frame and. That signals that, that it's a stronger stock, and so you know the, uh, it, to this week is has been the payoff. You know, keep in mind this week's candle will not set until the closing bell on Friday, and so a lot can happen between now and then. It could pull all the way back and form a long upper wick. It got above the the 100 week moving average at five, and above the 200 week moving average at 11. You want to see it stay above that 200 week moving average. You know it's been years since it's closed above that level. You can see it's been resistance in the past, so it'll be a red flag if it pulled back and closed below that level for the week. And then the big level to break is going to be the 300-week moving average at 20. If you can close above that level for the week, that's going to be your signal that it wants to break out higher. Okay, thanks for using this video. If you'd like to learn more about charts and technical analysis, come check out the chat. All right, thank you.